This week on RSPNB Update, the Peer Mini Strike brings skill XP blocks and resets for peers. We dive into what peers are used for and their origins. Then we tee up the most recent developments on Jagex accounts and share our thoughts on the 2023 Golden Gnomes. This is RSBNB Update, episode 928, recorded Thursday, March 30th, 2023, The Pure Spectrum. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us for another episode of RSBNB Update this week. Tanis, you're here as you are each and every week. Thank you, Shane. Also joining us this week is Parnassius. Welcome. Thank you, thank you, and good day to all the RSBNBers out there. And what we're going to be discussing this week is something called the Peers Mini Strike, which is something that has been brewing for a while. We owe uh, we owe a lot of this to Mod Stew. Uh, we'll talk a bit about that uh, all in good time, of course. We also got some stuff on the Golden Gnomes and a bit of a, uh, a look back on the history of Peers in RuneScape as well and plus uh, some uh new breaking news this thursday regarding regarding the jagex launcher and the jagex accounts that we'll be talking about too in a little while but if you're joining us uh, for the first time you can uh follow along the full show notes can be found at update dot show i'm in game at shane one two zero eight eight tanis is at tanis 79 and pernasius is Parnassian. It's always always nice when we have simple names, uh, simple names to say. <laughs> uh, and with that, we also have our friends chat, Bits Bites. That's where me, myself, and a whole bunch of other uh, hosts and producers hang out. And of course, we also have a community Discord as well at rsbnb.com slash Discord where you can take part in and there's lots of fun stuff in there too. And with that, I feel like we could just uh, jump straight on into uh, the Peers Mini Strike this week. Um I wasn't expecting this to come this soon, but uh, lo and behold, here we are. Uh, new new options uh, for peers, and you know, I, I think if you look at you op- you open the book of RuneScape, where does peer sit in the in the in the lexicon in twenty twenty three? And you know, you're probably wondering how niche of an update is this, and the, who is this benefiting here? Uh, what were you guys' first thoughts when you saw this this week? Uh, I thought we were in a time machine. I'm yeah, because like, oh, they would have given given anything for this in 2007, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. And then I had to wonder, like, probably like everyone else, like, who is this for? Um, you know, and it definitely does bring a, another style of gameplay, you know, makes it a little bit easier to do, a little more accessible. Um, but I think we can we can talk a little bit later about kind of what what we what it could have looked like. Um and and you know, think think about this way. People were already playing an Iron Man style game before it was made. Yeah. Iron Man mode. Yeah. Kind of the same with their thing own with personal this. limitations. Mm-hmm. Yep, exactly. Yeah. No. Uh, Pernasius? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not my style of play, but I mean, I know, you know, there are a lot of pures out there and a lot who were upset uh, when things changed. and But, you know, people sort of adjusted and, and made their own accounts. And by having these things where you can reset and such, and I'll take an example of one of our uh, clan members who... You know, he was playing a, a pure account. He was only doing all skilling. He he wanted no combat, and uh, you know, had had planted. I think it was a sunchoke seed. Plucked that, got strength, and got a strength level out of it, and you know, ruined his pure. Uh, and you know, little things like that. And I think you know, th- this update will will help a lot of those, and also for people at end of game who are looking at something to do. Uh, as as Tanner said, it gives them another style. You know. If they make a new account, make a pure account uh, on top of their their regular account. Skill peer. Hey, exactly. You know, yeah. If they got a couple of skill and, pures running, and I mean, it's it, a question it's not of a bad thing. Like, if you want to play the game without Prif, the skill pair is the is the way to do that because one of the quests in the Prif line requires twenty five ranged, I believe. So there's no way you're getting into Prif on a skill pair, even if you could hmm. dart all the bosses and whatnot. Um, so let's, we're going to go through some of the uh, accommodations made for skill pairs. Um, 
this week. So if you go to Nastroth in the Lumbridge Courtyard, a number of uh, dialogue changes have been made. First and foremost, the biggest one is XP blocking, where you will be able to block XP by saying, I want to block XP from specific skills. And with this, you will prevent yourself from ever getting XP in skills of your choice. But the caveat on this is that as a result of a request from the hit points prayers, or constitution prayers in this day and age, um, constitution XP will still be granted from defeating enemies in combat. So say you go out there with a bronze sword, you have all your combat XP blocked, and you kill a man or a woman at level 3. You will still get that, that constitution XP. And that's just something that skill peers are going to need to be aware of uh, going forward on this. But what it does block is if there's any quests out there that give Constitution XP that haven't been lamped, that will be blocked from here as well. So I I think that's pretty neat that you can uh, do that now. And I, I actually logged into my skill peer this week. Which has been kind of dormant since before fresh start, and I and I and I activated the toggle on all of these, and it it actually kind of got me thinking. You know, maybe it's time to dust off uh, this character at least after the after the act track is done, right? Because at at that point, maybe you know, I can you know one one twenty farm and pure. Yeah, <laughs> it's. I mean, it's already got ninety nine in a pet, so why not, right? That's it. Go for the not. Go for the full one twenty. I mean, yeah. that's it's it's a legitimate one twenty skill now. So yeah. And, uh, I mean, at at the same point, the thing that kind of put me off it is that I was asking myself, you know, if I did this and if I continued on, I would be locking myself out of Prif, which would be locking myself out of the crystal tools, of course, and the top-end archaeology tool as well. And the highest archaeology tool I'd be able to get, I believe, is the Mkando one so it, it's a it's a wider discussion on that and it it really comes down to your personal play style but as with as with most things in rs you can you can imprint your own um physical limitation on it and then it adds a, it adds another level of challenge uh to it and and that's where we uh we're going to talk about a little bit after about where where the peers come in 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 2023 um, but when you say about the tools and all that, yeah, it does limit you a bit, but all that really does is bring down the XP per hour slightly because you're yeah. not sort of critical yeah. striking as much. Yeah, and, and, and I mean, rumor has it an augmented dragon hatchet is really not that far off of an augmented crystal. And then there's ways it's to compensate not. in the other skills. Isn't well. there an Elder Rune? Oh, no, the Elder Rune. There's the this, Elder Rune uh, pickaxe, but it's not aug- augmentable. Yeah. yeah, they're not augmentable. That's true, yeah. Ones, so. Yeah. Um, but it's an entirely different gameplay, too, because remember, you're playing with just lodestones. So you take lodestones out of the game, you would be playing old, old school where you wouldn't even be able to get around. So with that's another graphics. like that's another <laughs> limitation you could put on yourself. I'm not going to unlock any lodestones, right? <laughs> if you wanted to, I guess you could do that. But um, continuing on, there's also an option to to provide proof that you've never used an XP blocker reset on your account. Um, and with this, this will toggle a tooltip on the combat level icon when you're inspected by a player indicating whether or not XP has been blocked on your account or you've used a minor reset. Uh, I, I think that's a nice vanity feature to have. That is, and yeah, I think that yeah, again you said be... that. You said it, Shane. Vanity. Uh, yeah, pure pure vanity. You know, You know what I'm excited about, though? Is now we can have pure alts, right? Yeah. Like, you know all those all those alts you have hanging around. Yeah. You can turn them into purists now. Yeah. I mean, right? I mean, they were just stealing anyway. I I I I actually don't have any of those. I believe that's you, because I mean, my fresh start oh. one has combat levels, and I just have okay. the skill peer. Otherwise, I only have those extra two accounts. Believe it or not. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Well, fair enough. <laughs> what do you have alts I've... that don't have combat levels? I think I do have a. Um... Yes, I, I believe I do. Okay. Well, there you go. Easter but weekend. I never, never, I never set out to make pures with <laughs> yeah. them or whatever. I just needed resources. I just needed mules. <laughs> I, I I did all my alts when they when they bought out the golden party hat. So I think I think they've all got XP and everything. Chasing all those, uh, all those shards for party hats. 
Yeah, and and I mean when you, when you look at it at the end of the day, it's 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 an interesting situation because this is only affecting um a certain segment of the population and with that Jagex has to be commended for doing such an update. Well, we'll get to that as we get to the end of these uh, patch notes here. They also added something called a minor reset to accommodate peers who have ruined an account by overleveling. And with this, Nastroth can now reset your XP in a, any skill of your choice to its minimum, providing that skill does not exceed level 10 or level 15 if constitution. So and yeah, this will... I mean, that is like a just a whoopsie. This is not going to let you... Mm fundamentally yeah. change right because because previously they had major resets designed to reset defense peers and constitution and prayer peers back from when eoc released so mm -hmm. with this the nastroth resets are now available on a six month cooldown instead of once per account so that's right. good as well i mean if you if you did the reset now and you you know make some mistakes over the next few months and and you know that gives Take a, a sun seed <laughs> like that gives a fairly wide range of wiggle room too i think in that you know going from level one to level 10 isn't something you do unless you you know accidentally open up a celebration lamp or something but hmm. um at, at the same time it creates wiggle room where the six month means that you know hey i can just be cognizant that i'm not gonna you know level this attack beyond level three and then when the when the next six months is up i can just reset it again if i if i were to make a mistake on that or if you were yep. to you know make a mistake and go do a quest and get some constitution xp and do the same sort of thing. and that's what i think is a, is a great um a great thing it's not like you can't just do it all the time but every six months so you know you've done a reset and then two months down the track you you know as you said you accidentally pick a, a a flower you think is okay and it gives you strength xp or you you know you forget your fishing rod and you've gone and uh you know, dark fishing and you did it barehanded and get strength xp you know well okay in a couple of months I, I can just leave it alone in a couple of months i can reset it and i get my account back to where it should have been so i think it's a very good uh, a very good update that they've done for for those players that want that exactly exactly um continuing on with this uh you need to have a bank pin in charge on your account in order to be able to to use this um which i mean everybody should have if you which playing, you should <laughs> which I yeah mean, if you've been playing for any reasonable amount of time <laughs> if you don't have that yeah the, everyone should be running the bank pin yeah and two-factor authenticators and, for... and and with this to prevent the major resets from being used repeatedly nastroth will cease to provide the major resets in less than six months on monday september 18th so this is just, in effect, cleaning things up because af after September 18th, the major resets will go away and then you'll just use the minor resets on whichever levels that you want to use them because it accomplishes the same thing. So um, that's just a cleaning up a bit of legacy uh, work there on that angle. And it's interesting uh, in the patch notes here because it says the limit of one major reset per account is lifted but Nastros two major resets were intended for two very different types of peers, so they cannot be combined. If you intend to make use of one of Nastros major resets before they are removed, which when you underscore that means that they're being completely removed, those resets, you need to be sure that you activate the major reset before activating the minor reset, since the resets will share a six-month cooldown and major resets will be removed in less than six months. If Nastroth is waiting six months after a minor reset, you won't be able to use that major reset before they're removed. And I mean, it, it feels like at this point we're reading we're reading the legalese for a contract here. So I'm just going to leave that <laughs> leave that note there. And uh, folks who need to know that or need to use that uh, fully understand what's going on with that. Um, keepsake box uh, checks now occur before Nastroth reset warning, so that if a skill reset uh, fails due to having keepsake items. The reset does not prematurely go on seven day cooldown. And this is actually a really important thing, skill peer related. This last patch note here, and this is probably one of the things that makes this entire entire ninja strike feel um all the all the more wholesome, is that they removed the level fifty nine 
magic requirement on the family crest quest. And you might be wondering, what well, what does that have to do with anything here? Well, the family crest quest is the quest that gives you those gauntlets, like the goldsmithing gauntlets, the cooking gauntlets, and so on and so forth. And one of the requirements of that quest is you needed to use, I believe it's the um, the bolt magic spells on Chronozon, who is level 84. And as such, they said, hey, because of this, you need 59 magic, because that's when you can activate um, these spells. But the interesting part in the way the game has evolved since this quest came out is that you can actually kill Chronozon and progress the quest and complete the quest by using a Death Touch Dart. So as a result, a skill peer can go in the family crest and use a dart on Chronozon and not even need that 59 magic requirement now. And that's why it was removed. Is it just allows more people to do this quest. And sure, you can you could still, you know, kill him the old fashioned way if you didn't want to use a dart, but of course you can get darts now from the traveling merchant shop. You can get them um, from the weekly uh, task uh, reward track as well. So there's plenty of sources of darts in the game, and this is just enabling more people to get through this quest. And I, I feel like this patch note here makes this all the more wholesome. Yep. Yeah. Fully that's... agree. Yep. And and you know I I remember looking at this when I made my skill peer and I was like okay so how is this gonna work I mean you can dart it but you still need the fifty nine magic requirement so I think if I ever if I ever fully pick up um the skill peer here again this will be this will definitely be one of the quests that that I can do because we all know how important how important those oh, yeah, smithing yeah. gauntlets are now right oh, yeah. yeah. And that even the cooking gauntlets are, are mm -hmm. important to you know bring down those uh, non burn rates and things. So I don't know what the I mean I think there's only two gauntlets. No, there's three. Used, right? I, I was there trying to remember three, what I, I was trying to remember what the third, third one. one was. The, the chaos <laughs> gauntlets, um, ten percent damage boost to bolt spells. <laughs> that's yeah, a, that's a that's the one no one uses. There's only two gauntlets people use. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, um, but I love this update this week. And granted, it's only a set of patch notes, but I think the, the credit needs to go out to the production team at Jagex for packaging these in so much a, a way that they actually feel like an update. Hmm. So, because... And I think, again, it's, it's, it's not a... Yeah, you know, it's not a, a play style that I would probably use, and yeah, you know, I say probably because you know, in, in a year's time, you know, once I've got my trim comp and everything, I might say, well, hey, I'm just going to do something like this. But it gives another game style. It gives you know, it gives that diversity of play to people, and you know, and hey, if it brings in new accounts, if you know someone is is maxed out and they just want to do this and they start another account. Yeah, it's more money for development to do things like this. So, yeah, it, it can only be a good thing. Yeah, and I mean, my my skill peer started as my second golden party hat account. <laughs> that's when I made it. <laughs> yeah. So that's when um, that's when and, all my and, uh, and, my one started. <laughs> and then you can kind of just from there meander off on which direction uh, you want to go. But in general, I think we need to see more of this. I think we need to see more of these mini strikes focusing in around a certain area and packaging them as such as, as an update, because this kind of goes back to the olden, olden days, thinking about it, where Andrew would just write a news post saying, hey, 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 we changed, you know, these, this handful of things, here's your RuneScape update for the week. And I think Is if it? you could have the massive big ninja strikes and patch notice weeks, and then you could have these other little ones to sprinkle in, it can kind of, I think, um, fill the gap of when it feels like we have no updates. And that's my hope going forward with these sorts of things. Hmm. And is, is, is this time to revisit uh, the prestige system on our, on our other skills again? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I'm still on. I want to do, I want to do Slayer and archeology span again properly. Yeah. Get XP and watch it build up. <laughs> yeah. And, and I mean, maybe that's a, maybe that's a topic for a monthly bit or another one of our half monthly <laughs> Uh, specials on that because I feel like that's another rabbit hole just like the comp stuff was uh, yes. when that came out so but I mean hey I mean if they if they do it for comp next month we 
had for skill peers this month. So uh, I, I, I want to say 10 out of 10 on this update. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. And I think it was uh, perfect, uh, perfect packaging. So. All right. I fully agree. All right. Um, Retro Abyssal Whip, anyone? Yes, please. Yeah. Hundred <laughs> yeah. percent. I, I, I feel like I, I feel like this is the weapon that we you know really got sucked into RuneScape with because it was the first time that they um, presented a, a a power fantasy that everybody wanted because before the whip you know everybody was running with you know the dragon longsword or the dragon dagger but when the whip came out and we learned what the abyssal demons at level eighty five Slayer dropped which was a slog to get to back in the day. The power that that presented compared to the barrows and stuff that we had at the time, oh boy, oh boy, it was such a special feeling at the time, and it this really does make me want to you know go and build a full set of uh, PVM capable uh, melee gear right now with the tier ninety two, and then just override it to this one. Whoops are just cool. Like they're not in a lot of games. And no, it you know they're just. They're a different kind of weapon, and it's I don't know. It's just kind of neat. Yeah, and and I mean they got the they got the transparent one, and then they got um I don't know what what we call the one on the left. I know it's not the sausage roll one because there was um sausages on that one. Oh, they're they're calling it the remastered <laughs> abyssal whip. So, um, two hundred yeah, rune I mean, coins. Right. Two hundred rune coins are one eighty for members, and once again, you know, if for some other games out there, you're looking at you know twenty bucks for uh, a cosmetic override like this, and you know you can get this with practically one bond, which is what five bucks if you wanted to. So uh, bonds like eight bucks, but oh yeah, oh, it went up in price. Okay. Yeah, they went up a bit. Yeah, but again, I mean, yeah, the, the whip was that that iconic weapon. Like when I first started the game, that was the that was the weapon you went for. You know, that was the great yep. slayer weapon that you yep. you chased, and it's just got that. That nostalgic feel of wow, that was that f- that was my first goal in RuneScape was was <laughs> getting up to be able to get that whip and you know have the strength and everything to use it. So I love it, and uh, I just wish we could uh, get a, a level ninety two whip out there that I could override it with. <laughs> yeah, and and the and and the the really interesting uh, part about that is that we were actually talking about that in pre-show about where um, and what that means. Uh, for the for the armor and whatnot that you wear, right? So yep, in in terms of how that looks, so, that's uh, right. I mean, you know, you get that, and then you've got to get a, a an armor set, you know, another override set to match it and such. So you know, great, you can great do what I update this one. You can do what I did a while back. Well, gosh, I, my God, I've been playing this game forever years you do? ago at this point. I went for the Indiana Jones look. So you gotta you gotta get a brown cavalier and then you get your whip <laughs> and then you get your hiker's outfit. All right? So you got the whole kinda Indiana Jones thing going on. Well you got the bomber jacket in there now, so for that little Oh yeah, look. yeah, yeah. Now you could use the bomber jacket, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't there before. Oh my and god. And then you go to all the new bar- borrows and isn't Orlando Blues yeah. had a better looking a better a closer one to um... It's too expensive. Probably, though. but I couldn't afford yeah, that. I, mean, so. no, I, won. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it's yeah, to go for that ultimate look. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. We well, love uh, sure. you guys you guys are obviously way more into fashion scape than I am. I just have my <laughs> green outfit that goes with the, the farming cape. I have everything turned off except my Master Quest cape. Everything, okay, everything else is hidden. So I've only got my my sort of the original outfit that I started the game with. Um, that's what I wear. The only only override I use is a, is my Master Quest cape. <laughs> nice. All right. So with that, let's move on to the rest of our uh, patch notes this week. Uh, a number of graphical changes made yet again. The first one touching on accessibility for Dungeoneering Tannis. Uh, fixed an yeah. issue where the lights in the crystal light puzzle in Damon High were not displaying correctly. That's always been a difficult puzzle, too. Yeah. When you can't see very well. You know? I, I, I saw a picture of it at somewhere earlier this week. I couldn't find it in time for the show, but it is a really big improvement in that room, I have to say. That's 
great. Yeah. Mm. Um, they yeah, also... I don't have problem, and it's uh, it was always hard for me to yeah. say, oh, which one is that? Yeah, so that's yeah. Well, I think that's a wider anything, du- that, anything has to do with accessibility is a. Great I think that's update. a wider dungeoneering problem, if I'm being honest. Yeah, <laughs> so. it's very true. It's so um, old now. <laughs> uh, fixed it an issue with environment visibility at the Soul Altar. All right, uh, just in lighting across the Czar City, which uh, carries on from the from the updates that we talked about last week. Just generally improving the way things look in the game. And I did not hike to go and see this one. Overhauled the lighting and updated the terrain textures in the underground pass. Does hmm. anyone go there other than for the quest? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, with all with 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 all the uh, teleports you have now, you don't need to run through there anymore. No, you don't. You don't. <laughs> Actually, sorry. I know. I know one person. This will help, and that'll be uh, Earth. Oh, okay. No, he he, he doesn't. He doesn't. He doesn't use the uh, the lodestone. No, does he? he doesn't. But he uses the crystal teleport, and that's how he gets. Uh, ah, fair gets enough. Past that, so. <laughs> I mean, next time he needs to go go to Luletia, I'll tell him that he has to teleport to Ordoin and then run through the pass. But <laughs> um, we also got some typos fixed in quests, including extinction and murder on the border. Um, corrected the typo um, uh, potion with two eyes to be potion and uh, rude to be roof uh, in quest dialogue for murder on the border. <laughs> and then finally, uh, this is this is actually good. Um, the required items to construct the buildings during new foundations and murder on the border are now listed in their quest overviews. So it'll show how many planks and whatnot that you need for that. So that's good. Uh, general patch notes, inventory icons for achievement caves have been updated to be more easily distinguishable from one another. Um, and tool tips have been, uh, adjusted for the super Zamorak brew, the spiritual prayer potion, the summoning potion and recipe shop potions. Then we got an interesting one where the description when destroying the mask of the white worm uh, has been corrected to show the right price. Previously, dis- the description claimed that the price was 50,000 GP when the correct price was actually 35,000 GP on that. And there's your patch notes for the week, everyone. Um, nice, uh, nice round selection, including, including all the stuff about peers. All right. Uh, before we move on, I want to thank some Patreon supporters for this week because, as as they know, and as the listeners probably know, we, we do so much around here because of the Patreon supporters, and we take great pride in the fact that so much of what we do here is community driven. So this week, I'd like to thank Alfie S, Amos Reed, Andrew C, Arvids L, Beekeeper Steve, Big Huge Rat. Chunk the Monk, Cycle RS, Drama Free, Dura Max, Enrique V, Free Milk, Jacob G, Jade Gizmo, Jason S, Jeebus, Jesse W, Keski, Ling01, Mohan V, Nate the Great, Parnassius, Ricky A, RS Nerdherd, Samuel FL, Scott DS, Shirt Pants, Stabiv, Tabby, The Naked Captain, The Dabbing Goat, Tim, Tom V, Zant, and Zazakon. Thanks so much, everybody. And as we mentioned, that means the world to us. Um, these guys have access to an entire back catalog of soon to be 58 monthly bits out there talking about a variety of subjects. Uh, the one that was most recently passed was the part two of the skill uh, tier list. And you might remember uh, September last year, we built a tier list uh, ranking the RuneScape skills from A to D. And then with that, this time we're going to go through them, parse through that list and say, what are the good characteristics of, of the skills and what are the bad characteristics and how exactly and what exactly, how and what exactly do our tier list show on that? So that's what the patrons voted for. If that sounds interesting to you, if you want to hear that when it arrives late next week, you can sign up for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com slash RSBNB. And with that, you'll also... Uh, gain access to all the other monthly bits and you'll be helping uh, to fund the costs for hosting and production of the podcast. We also do have the VIP tier for $3 a month where you'll get a special rank on Discord, including a chat channel, mention on the podcast at the start of the month and access to high quality stereo versions of the show. And 
If you want to give the ultimate gift, we have our insider tier for $5 a month where you'll receive a shout out on the podcast each and every week in addition to everything else. And you also gain access to the clips that we use to make the clip show. And of course, a big, huge thank you goes out to all of our Patreon supporters right now. They're involved in uh, taking our uh, annual Patreon survey. Uh, if you are a Patreon member and you haven't yet taken the survey, please uh, go and do that. You can find the post uh, pinned on the Patreon website, or even if you're a new Patreon member, you feel like signing up right now, you want to have your impact on Patreon offerings, sign up. Any of our Patreon tiers uh, can take that and uh, definitely getting some interesting results from that so far about uh, what you guys uh, like and uh, where we're going to uh, take this thing in the next year or so. So, of course, a big thank you again uh, to everybody out there. Patreon.com slash RSBNB. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. All right. I feel like I feel like this one uh, needs to be shouted out and about from from above the rafters right now. Um, we got an update on the Jagex accounts and the closed beta as of today, March 30th, recording day. Um, the approximate percentage of eligible accounts now to convert over to this is 50% of RuneScape accounts. 50% nice. of players are now going to be able to use this. And just a quick recap of how this is going to work. They expect to move into open beta in early April, and that means that you'll be able to opt in and start using this, and they're going to talk about it more in the March newsletter that that's going to unveil how you can do that. But what, what happens with this is that this is, in essence, a leveling up of account security that I think in large part probably started with the login lockout and um, growing those systems that were surrounding that so the solution is the jagex accounts which we talked about before but as a recap for people who might not be aware these accounts they say allow for increased security and stability better than what is currently offered on old school runescape and runescape accounts in that they use industry standard technology in when it comes to verifying your account two-factor authentication and the forms of passwords that can be used and and people might not know this but your RuneScape password, as it was when you first made your account, could not handle capital letters or symbols on that. So much so that if you entered, say, a dollar sign in your account, the the client, when you were entering that, would just treat it as the number four. So you would think you were entering a dollar sign, but in reality, you were just entering uh, letters and numbers. So this is a huge step up in that. And it also makes it so that if you have multiple accounts like we do, you'll only be entering in one email address to log in, and then you'll go to the Jagex launcher, choose which one you want to use, and open it up as you have been doing, if you do already uh, use the Jagex launcher. Uh, they also got support for um, the uh, authenticator apps out there, like Google Authenticator, and with that, it's actually better than what's out there right now on the RuneScape accounts for Authenticator in that um, you're actually able to have backup codes. So if you ever lose your authenticator, you won't need to go through customer nice. support to have your authenticator turned off to access your account. All you do is you save your backup code somewhere safe, and then you can uh, log in with those. Um, and as I mentioned, also um, very robust passwords on this. And the best way to figure out if you have access to this is to go to runescape.com and once again we'll say it because you know it's a it's a classic thing getting fished for your runescape account runescape.com sign in there click the account button and you'll know if you're eligible by seeing if you see a banner that says enhance your security with an upgrade button on it and if you do that you'll be taken through the process of creating a jagex account you'll set up a jagex uh username which is independent of your runescape accounts and then with that, uh, you can migrate that over to the Jagex launcher and, and you're good to go after you, you add your accounts. And you'll just have to enter in your usernames or emails and passwords of your uh, RuneScape accounts one more time. And then you'll have full access to it under your Jagex account. And it's, and it's really as simple as that. Um, I, I feel like this has been a long time coming. And if you have any questions about how uh, this works, we'll have the full links in the show notes to this page at update.show. 
uh, and with that, the Jag- the Pierce Jagex also has a video on this as well. So, um, are you guys going to be uh, being an early adopter like I chose to do today? Definitely. As soon as we finish the show, I'm jumping on to do this. All right, Tannis. I think any, anything that enhances security is a good thing. So, yeah, especially I, RuneScape. Yeah, I mean, I was gonna, I was going to wait, but you guys have kind of talked me into go ahead and pull the trigger now, and it almost feels like Pinocchio becoming a real boy, right? Like, because like, this is not uncommon <laughs> everywhere else. So this is kind of cool. Um, and I'd already been using it somewhat i mean not this the but i was already using the launcher um where you could do you know you put in your your emails and stuff but um that even you know that that would get a little tedious when you know back with fresh start when you were going to one account and then you have to yeah. come out and go into the other one and so this this is going to be nice yeah and you know I like like we said, long time coming. I think probably part of this came out of the login lockout and with modernizing systems on the login lockout, you start asking the question, okay, well if we're modernizing it, what can we do uh on the player side and whatnot? And I think when this officially launches or goes into open beta, they'll definitely have to do some sort of live stream uh where they got the tech team on from that because I, I know you and I really enjoyed watching that live stream where, where these folks talked about uh, that sort of stuff. I, f- I forget how you described the one J mod on that episode. <laughs> well, I forget too, but yeah, he was he was something. Yeah, but uh, just in before uh, you know, Shane and I who were just going to adopt it and Tannis who wanted to wait just to make sure it was secure. I just want to get in before Tannis gets locked out that it was his own decision. We didn't twist his arm into it. <laughs> Right. Yeah. No. And just to give it was you Shane's power persuasion. <laughs> yeah, just to give you guys an idea on how this has progressed, on the fourteenth of March, they said it was one percent of the accounts. A week later on the twentieth, they brought it up to five. Three days later to fifteen percent. Four days after that to twenty five percent, and another three days after that up to fifty percent. So what that tells me from looking at this is they have internal metrics in terms of how the accounts are being created and if there's any sort of issues with the systems behind the scenes, if they're getting any sort of bug reports on that in terms of the volume. And if they're not, that's what in effect gives them the green light to open it up to more and more players. Mm. That's, that's my, uh, that's my feeling on how this goes. Yeah, it's been running for two weeks, and they've gone, as you said, from basically the one percent up to fifty percent. I think it's, uh, I think it's pretty safe. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, at at some point, I, I feel like everybody's going to be moved over to this regardless, and it'll be kind of like that uh, process that it took, however long. I think it was what? When did they kill Java? Was that December twenty nineteen? I think. Uh, I, I feel yeah. like it. Yeah, I think it was. Yeah. I, I, I feel, it was around then. I feel like that's going to be the same kind of thing that we're going to be on to this, where you're going to have these very few skeptical holdouts out there. But um, nonetheless, I, I don't think this is anything we have to be afraid of. So I'd say if you feel if I'd, I'd say if you feel like you're an early adopter, go for it now. But if not, wait till open beta, and then definitely do it once once release comes, depending on how you feel. That would be my that would be my advice to everybody out there. All right. Then comes the Golden Gnomes. These were announced uh, announced last Friday. Uh, winners of the twelfth annual Golden Gnomes. Uh, did you guys watch the presentation? I didn't get I didn't get around to it because it was on Friday, and Friday is one of my busy days. It's yeah, not I something I really get excited about. These type of things. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. Well, let's go through uh, who won for RS3 then. Um, best new. RuneScape video creator Way Dot. I I haven't heard of this person. Have you guys? Which I guess is no, why, they're no. the, why they're the new creator. So that's good. Uh, best uh, video creator Pro Talks. No introduction needed. And best He's Rune- one I have heard of. <laughs> yeah, best RuneScape video. Um, this twenty year old MMO is finally good again by uh, Jimmy with a one. Emphasis on finally good again. Interesting, I think, mm-hmm. isn't it? But 
Um, the way this works is that the community submits these. So this is where how the community felt things landed on this. So so that's wonderful. Uh, streaming side again, best new streamer, Waydot. Uh, best RuneScape streamer, Sick Nerd. I, I feel like we've we've heard of him, and uh, definitely mm-hmm. interesting to see him on this category because I feel like his his streamer isn't isn't cookie cutter the way most of the other ones are. Yeah, a little little variety there. Yeah, I know, I know, um, I know. Folks in Clan Quest enjoyed watching him when he was going through all the quests because you don't really ever see you don't really ever see people playing quests on stream now, do you? You don't see people doing anything other, other than, than three PBM. bosses. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't. I, and, I and, will and, admit and I don't fair, watch. <laughs> and, and to be fair, you can stream other things, and people do, but they just don't generate the amount of traffic that high end PBM does. Go ahead, Burn. I don't. I cut you off. No, there. I was just saying. I I don't. I don't watch um, RuneScape streaming videos or. YouTube videos yeah, anymore. And, the only and, time if new boss comes out, I want to see how a mechanic works. I might flick it on, but that's about it. Yeah, and you know, it, I, I'd be interested to know if this is like a content creator's thing or if it's just me. Um, but one thing I've found over the last number of years is that I don't watch any content creators anymore, really, for any game. Yeah, for I, any game. Nope. Yep, I'm right there with you, Shane. And I used to. Yeah. But I I I don't now. I and I don't know. Like if there's something like I know where to go if I want to, you know, look up what the new tank is in World of Tanks or what the new starship is in Stowe or what the newest fangled thing on ESO is. But with RuneScape, we're so into this, we're so, we got our ear down to the rail, so to speak, mm-hmm. that it's kind of difficult to pay attention to the other to other creators, I feel. And yeah, I agree. I don't watch any RS creators, and over the years, you can tell me if this is true as well that the amount of creators you watch for other g- games has dwindled too, because that's the same position I'm in. It is. I it, it's particularly significant in RS. I feel because, um, I feel like there's there's a couple categories right there's there's pvm which i just don't have any interest in um but then it seems like when it's not pvm it's just sensationalizing whatever the flavor of the a lot of negativity yeah and and it and it's just this i mean really it's just a sensationalizing yeah and, little things and, and in some ways that's the same reason i don't go on reddit as well is that aside from that i don't want to bias myself for the show mhm because if i if if i watch everybody i'll have my opinion assigned to me and i think that's one thing a lot of people don't realize is that when it comes to any kind of media real life or game related the vast majority of people out there upwards of 90% have their opinions assigned to them without realizing it yep so That's why I never block anyone on Twitter or anything because I want to see oh, yeah. both sides all the time. Exactly, exactly. Um, I mean, un- unless it's you know just outright spam. But well, it's, yeah, of course, it's a different but... story. Anyways, um, media one hundred and one lesson aside, there, I, I feel like that <laughs> that could be its own thing. Um, the art awards. Uh, now these ones are definitely something. Uh, best new RuneScape artist, Evergreen. Uh, best RuneScape artist, NY Channel. And the best artistic creation is a lo-fi RuneScape moment by Sweezy, which has an entire room. Uh, it's a painting done digitally, of course, uh, with a whole bunch of RuneScape-themed Easter eggs uh, throughout it. You can see the Hunter Skill Cape um, and various other things inside inside the scene here. So, I, I mean, it, it's, it's definitely a, a very nice... A uh, piece of art. It's got lots of depth to it, and I'd imagine, I'd imagine the person here, uh, the, the creator, if they wanted to, at this point with this, could probably sell some prints of this and make a make a pretty nice profit on that. So, but, but the thing that blew me the most away out of these golden gnomes was the best cosplay creation of Nature Sentinel by Cray Critter. We were we were debating with this in pre-show. 
is this 3D printed or is this actual wood on this? It's phenomenal, whatever it is. Yeah. I don't normally say, yeah, you know, get excited over these things, but that is. Oh, I don't get ex- uh, excited about cosplays either, but yeah. No, but that is something that it's like, wow. I, you know, I'd wear that. <laughs> yeah, if I was going to a fancy dress party, that's something I'd say, yeah, I would wear that. <laughs> And, and but was, everyone would think you were an ant from uh, Lord of the Rings, right? Yeah, so. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> no one would cast for escape. <laughs> and, and I'm wondering yeah, no, if this is, right. if it's a real um, wood, leaves, and moss on here. I mean, like zooming into it, it, it certainly looks that way. Yeah, the moss and leaves looks uh, looks like it's real. I, st- I, I still think it's 3D printed. But it looks so, well, so much like real wood. They've just, yeah, I mean, hats off to them. They've done a phenomenal the job. The issue, though, if you did 3D printing, that would be pretty heavy. So I think... That would wood. I think, <laughs> yeah, I was like, wait a minute. Right, and, and that's why I'm going to present a third option here, because we were just talking 3D printed or wood. But I, I was thinking, what, what if it's just styrofoam that's sculpted and spray-painted? Can you do that? If that is, oh, yeah. that's a hell of a lot of work. Because you can get is, like that, uh, even more. Because <laughs> you can get like, uh, like you, you know, you have your typical packing styrofoam, right? But you can get a higher yeah, density yeah. Uh, styrofoam that you can actually shave and sculpt. Yeah. Oh, and then with that, wow. you can airbrush after that. Yeah. Because because well, that no would be the what, it's a lot of work. Yeah, that'd and be a the lot light way of doing people. it. So. Yeah. But. Um, that one absolutely blew me away. And like, like we said, we're not typically a, uh, a bunch of people here to jump up and down about a cosplay creation. So, but even the way they're standing with their legs spread like that, it does look like it's got a bit of weight behind it. Right. Because you know, you're sort of balancing yourself with your legs spread wider than you'd normally stand. Right. Fair enough. Um, but but yeah, whatever it is phenomenal. Well done to, uh, who was that? That was uh, Craig Craig Critter. Critter. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Tree Boy. Uh, Just reading the Instagram post right now. Uh, Oh, yeah. It's it's, uh, made with puzzle piece uh, foam materials. Well, there you go. Yeah, and of course we go into the Instagram post that says what it is we were were guessing, and and we kind of got it right. Well, you did in the end. (laughs) Well, yeah. But of, of course, that's the, a hell of a lot of work then, because yeah. that that would all have to be hand carved. So, yeah, even more kudos to him. And 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 to get the and to get the balance right, so the 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 arms and the symmetry is all there is something as well. Mm. So, but also with the golden gnomes comes the community champion, and these are this is an award that we always keep our eyes peeled open to, and this one this year was the RuneScape art community. Um, which is interesting because it's kind of a sub discord of the of of the main RuneScape Discord. They have their own Discord and whatnot. There's lots of J mods in there. Um, there's lots of artists. There's a section where people can go in there and uh, scout out a commission, share art, that sort of thing. And uh, just reading from this here, they say it's with utmost pleasure we acknowledge the RAC, the RuneScape art community, as an absolute powerhouse in the RuneScape community, from being on the forefront of engaging the swaths of artists, writers, and musicians around the scene in monthly prompts. And they say, uh, this month's uh, stained glass is amazing. They also schedule um, collaborations such as the art fight. And they say they have been a constant ocean of wonderful pieces made by amazing, talented artists. So as per usual, I think the they always hit the spot with the RuneScape art community. So... Right on, on that. And there's your golden gnomes for this year. It's going to be nice when they can actually finally get back and start doing these things in person again, eh? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So. All righty. Well, we started off the show talking about peers and the changes that came to peer accounts this week. But what we also wanted to do with this is just have a bit of a discussion of about maybe 20, 30 minutes or so. Uh, maybe a bit less on the history of peers in RuneScape because I, I got thinking about this this week, and I know I I jogged your memory as well, Tannis. 
uh, about where peers initially started. And I, I want to kind of just nail down a definition first. So a peer is a player who deliberately chooses not to level certain skills to obtain an advantage in combat or for prestige purposes. Do you guys agree with that uh, general definition of what a peer is? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we're going to start with the origin of peers. And, and I feel like these things started way back in the day with the primary goal of being centered around PvP in that you would lower your combat level but have higher offensive stats so that you would have an advantage over somebody who was about the same combat level. The idea being is that if you were, you know, level 60, spec primarily into, say, attack, but somebody else was evenly balanced between attack, constitution, and defense, you would have the leg up on them and be able to hit them harder and faster than they could hit you, which would provide the benefit for uh, old-school RuneScape PvP prior to the wilderness being removed. And that's where I feel that this thing started. Um, do you guys have any memories of old PvP wilderness peers? Only yep. after you brought it up, I was like, oh, that's right. I'm, I'm sure you got. Right. I'm sure you got smacked by a few runecrafting back in the day. Oh, yes. And we learned quickly not to go in the wilderness. It's it. It wasn't. Yep. Friendly. <laughs> yeah, my first, uh, my first and only foray into the wilderness just got killed out there. I would had nothing. I was just going, oh, what's this area? I've gone out there, got smacked. Go, yeah, okay, people kill out here, so I'm not going back there again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but, and... yeah. That's that to me. I mean, yeah. The the the, the pure was always that. Um, that combat thing where just to get that the solo hunter so to speak is the way i kind of saw them um because you would go into the wilderness and the idea behind it is that you would at that point in effect be able to kill someone who is higher level than you because you probably had higher combat stats than them or surprise somebody who is of equal combat to you and that they wouldn't be able to fight back and that of course uh probably you probably gained a great deal of notoriety around that as well and you know i I remember back in the day that that peer was a dirty word in parts (laughs) of the community well that's the funny thing with like i completely i don't know if i blocked this out or (laughs) just didn't remember it because pure to me was always somebody that was a level three skiller right like and then and then i was like wait a minute shane's right I forgot of I forgot about the the PvP and the combat guys, but I, I mean when I thought of pure, yeah yeah for your EOC, but because what always came to my mind was the was the level three skillers, mm. and that that's a post EOC thing because I think uh, pure was after that did become skillers. Oh no, it, it was uh, definitely pre EOC as well. Um, oh, okay. For the longest time, even you know shortly after RS two launched, RSBNB hosted. Uh, what was the uh, largest uh, skill peer clan in game? Peaceful uh, with two L's, believe it or not. Oh, um, it, and it was a clan specifically designed for skill peers, and this was before EOC. So, and you know, I, I I feel like I feel like the definition of peer, in my view, was always combat related, and the skill peers were underneath. Uh, pre EOC, which which sounds different than than what Tennis's perspective was. Mm-hmm. So, mm. well, yeah, again, yeah, to me, the the, the pure bef- to me before EOC was yeah, combat pures out there killing people, and um, sort of post EOC pure just became oh yeah, you're skilling pure now because yeah, you're just not chasing the combat and such, you're just getting all the skills up. So yeah. It's funny how three different people, three different perspectives, <laughs> and 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 that's that's, right. and, that, and that, those are the things that we always like highlighting uh, with these sorts of segments. But an interesting thing happened with the launch of a certain mini game called Soul Wars. Uh, Soul Wars was seen as the as the production factory for peers, because what it allowed you to do, and you, uh, you guys tell me if you ever grinded soul wars for combat that's how i ground to 100 combat myself back in the day um soul wars allowed for you to get combat xp in the combat skills without gaining hit points xp which was another way to further your peer 
Yeah, I, the only experience I had with Soul Wars was for achievements that I needed to do there. Or, no, 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 not Soul Wars, not Soul Wars, sorry. Uh, pest Control, sorry. Pest Control. Oh, no, I oh, love yeah, Pest I've Control. Some, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That was my favorite minigame, Pest Control. Yeah. And and you were actually, and you uh, were able to do it with Soul Wars to an extent, but I feel like the the bigger one came from Pest Control. Yeah, I mean, I played a lot of both of those mini games for different reasons. I mean, I played a lot of Soul Wars for Slayer VIP tickets from Dollar, but never for pure for XP. You know. yeah. yeah, and 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 and, and, and we know where I did a lot, and we know where the best XP is um, post DOC, post ED three still. For combat, yeah. I mean, I like I said, I was doing it <laughs> so I could turn dollar into VIP tickets. Yeah, yeah. Um, I still have a pet and an abyssal uh, thing that dropped that I need to convert into a pet at some point with the number of tokens from Soul Wars or whichever it is. Nice. Yeah, I just can't be bothered to go back at this point, you know. But yeah. Um, yeah. Do you guys ever? Uh, you guys aware of the pejorative uh, PC product, pest control product? Uh huh. Where were you guys in? Where were you guys in like two thousand seven? Pest control. I I just loved oh it well, I armor. wasn't here yet. Oh okay. Yeah, I didn't start till two thousand eleven. Oh, okay. So in, I'm only twelve years old on RuneScape. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> so. You know, you know, I, I mentioned that that the word, that the word peer at one point was kind of a dirty word, right? Well, another pejorative that was used was the PC product, the pest control product, is that people would, at some point in the community, look down at these people who train their combat stats using pest control because you could tell because their you know their attack was far out of bounds with their constitution or something, right? And oh, really? Uh, See, I did pest control for for the glass cannon armor and then eventually they made it even better and then i and then i just liked it oh yeah people used to cool. do it for the xp all the time oh okay. wow yeah, no, yeah. I was, yeah i did it for the void uh, the, the elite void armor yeah that's what i was yeah that's what i did yeah because that was so good that uh, that that armor was brilliant to use at um dagonoth kings that and and once again I, I'm I'm just having my mind blown that the fact you know we, we have three different perspectives here on pest control. <laughs> but that's it. But I mean, you're you're and, looking and they at all a, kind of know, factor into the peer equation, but they're slightly different. You're a of 21 course. year old account. I'm a 12 year old account, and I think Tannis is what probably 14 or 15. Yes, I started yeah. in an 08. So you guys 09. never experienced the the stigma of training combat at pest control then? No. No. Wow. Okay. And in many ways, I feel like, you know, you know how everybody min-maxes now with your combat gear and whatnot, or min-maxes to get the optimal amount of XP per hour, right? I feel like yeah, the min-maxing that. <laughs> I feel like the min-maxing that happened for that generation of RuneScape was the combat performance through making a peer in that you would be able to, in effect, tilt the scales and such for PvP. Because... You know, everybody, of course, now says that when you go do combat and you go do these uh, bosses at high in rage streaks and whatnot, that's where you get the thrill from now in RuneScape PVM. But before EOC, that was PvP, and you needed a peer at times to do that effectively. Okay. I mean, I'll take your word for it. Yeah, and, and, and that's an era of the game that's just entirely gone. And, yeah, and and I, and I think we fully realized that, and m managed the removal of PvP this past summer with the Wilderness uh, PvP removal and the remaster. Of the update wilderness. of the decade still. Okay, yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> I I didn't. I never sh shed a tear over it. I mean, just just saying. Okay. Well. Put yourselves in the in these shoes then, and I don't know. Maybe you guys don't like PvP that much, and but no, put, I um I've spent more time in the wilderness uh, since they removed it than I have in my entire twelve years of playing. Okay, and 
I understand why people PvP in RS. There's a there's an adrenaline rush behind it. And there definitely was back in the old days with your peers and whatnot. Yeah, but there's an adrenaline rush for going up and punching a baby in the face and stealing their candy too. But, I mean, it doesn't mean it's a good thing. <laughs> I mean, if you want an Tanya, adrenaline Tanya, rush in Tanya, combat... Tanya, <laughs> I mean, adrenaline rush in combat, Shane? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's nothing like the adrenaline rush to put some money on the line, jumping in the arena. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the sad casino? Yeah. <laughs> Bring back the sand casino <laughs> and tax it. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, adults, it tax at seventy five percent. Yeah, right. There you go. But the point is, is that <laughs> peers were PvP back in the day, and come EOC and RuneScape three, peers effectively disappeared overnight when uh, wilderness PvP and free trade was removed, and following EOC, that was another nail in the coffin for PvP and peers as well. And you, at that point, ask yourself, why would somebody make a peer, a combat peer? Yeah, I, I honestly have... You don't really see... That's why I said post-EOC, pure to me was a skilling pure because you, I just never saw a combat pure. Yeah, I mean, and, I mean there wasn't any point. To that. Yeah. Mm. And and I feel like the um, discussion on combat peers after EOC comes down to one focused around vanity, challenge, and prestige. In that, if you can go right. out there and you know kill a boss with one defense, nice. But also at the same time, post EOC, that cuts you out off of a number of great defensive abilities. So, but that's like the difference though too, like between. Originally, it was deception. I'd much rather have vanity than deception, which was the main goal, right? I mean, yeah. that's what you've explained yeah. and that, highlighted. That, that, that's how I felt it was. And I mean, yeah. if if there's somebody in the woodwork listening who was a you know a PvP peer back in the day, please please get in contact with us. I scratched my Discord list long and hard. I scratched my friends list long and hard in game. I looked at the Clan Quest roster. And nobody was jumping out to me as having been a peer back in the day. Um, I did. I did talk with one of the uh, one of my friends who did run a PvP clan back in the day, and and you know we talked about it for a bit. And the general consensus from him, from him, was that peers were largely for solo PvP, and that's how you PvP'd back prior to the wilderness. PvP removal and prior to EOC. But now, I mean, you really have to ask the question why, I think. Um, why would you do that? And we'll go, in, go into why you would make any kind of peer uh, in 2023 in just a bit. But I want to go through some of the types of peers uh, right now. Um, I want to talk about the accident. The 9 HP prayer, or peer, rather. Uh, there's only a few of these in game still there was a time where accounts were brought over from runescape classic and some of them were bugged in that they were only brought over with 9 hp so there are accounts out there that only have 9 hp and if you don't train that you can still have that 9 hp today wasn't there a a point where uh andrew gower like as a punishment, you used to set people to like one HP or something like that if he caught him doing something wrong. He just like maybe that sounds kind of familiar, but I don't have an. Yeah, I heard, I heard a story. I don't know if it's that. true yeah. or if it's just you know yeah. urban uh, an urban legend. But I heard where yeah someone pissed yeah you, know, you, you you piss Andrew Gower off. Go yeah, right, so we just just drop your HP to one, and you had to sort of build it back up again. Which wouldn't be that hard thinking about it, but you know. No, of course not. But yeah, although back in back in the classic days, it's probably a lot harder than it is these days. Yeah, because <laughs> I mean, one HP, you get smacked by anything at that point. Um, <laughs> but if the nine HP peers were special cases, they were accidents in most parts. Then we get to the one defense peer, and I feel like this was the most common going back. Um, most of these people took their accounts to level 60 in RS2 for dragon weaponry. But it was also, of course, feasible at times 
um, to take your peer to level 82 magic and do Desert Treasure to get ice splits because we all know how obnoxious mm -hmm. those ice spells were for freezing people. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. um, and once again, you emphasize that one defense, but there's other variations as well that were included, like maybe not leveling up summoning and prayer because that would be seen as the hardest. Some people um, might have only taken prayer to level 15, for example. Some people might say, oh, I need protect from Elise, so they might have took it only to 43. So there's different levels of peer. There's a spectrum from, I guess what you could say, the purest of being one defense and one summoning and one prayer on one end to the other side where you start to work other things in, like maybe some summoning, maybe some prayer, depending depending on where you land. But you saying peers are on the spectrum, Shane? Well, there's a, a, you, you can put any you can put anything on a spectrum if 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 you really want. That's, to. that's true. So, um, and you know, I I think you can have something called the peer spectrum in in RS when it comes down to it. And uh, I, I feel like skill peers are at the furthest end of that spectrum um, because they keep all their combat stats at one. And that was, of course, the focus mm -hmm. of this week's update. Um, but Looking at these, do you know? Do any of these, like, if you were back in the day, would any of these have an appeal to either of you? I've always been an all rounder, so sort of yeah. that pure type thing never interested me at all. Uh, because I just, I, I just like to train everything uh, and, and just see sort of a, a tick up and have sort of an all round account, but. You know, if they if they had like a competition uh, similar to your Fresh Start Worlds, oh, yeah, uh, you know they brought out like yes. a three or four month competition to do something like that. Uh, okay. Again, you know, you know bonds, you know bonus XPs or whatever, and, and just to to challenge to work out the best way to get to yeah get get a you know a, 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 just a pure with nothing else yeah only farming or only um, yeah. Only wood cutting, something like that. It uh, it'd be interesting, and and that gets yeah. what get and that gets to what peers can be in twenty twenty three. Obviously, we had the skill peer update this week, but like you said, it, peers can also be done for a challenge or for prestige rather than a combat benefit because you don't really need that in this day and age. So it's easier than ever to do that now with this week's update. And I think, like you said, that's where we go from here. You go to some kind of fresh start, like limited mode, where you could have accounts that are limited in terms of what skills they can train. Now that that clearly exists in game, I know Tannis, you wanted to highlight some of this. Yeah, no, I just, I, I really, um, I agree with that, and that would be the thing that drew me into it, right? Um, I think, you know, your idea of perhaps even pairing that with a uh, with an Iron Man uh, or group Iron Man thing would be yeah. absolutely wonderful. Um, and, and what that means is one person would only be able to train gathering skills. One person would only be able to train combat skills. One person would be able, only be able to train artisan and so on and so forth. Yeah, I mean, to me, that sounds fun. Um, you know, I think it's one of those things where... We they they had this update they had it ready um, it was waiting on some other things that had to be in place first so it was a matter of you know we can release this now and just and get it out the door because it's been sitting here for a minute or we you know wait even longer to try to put it together a bigger package now I'm somebody that doesn't mind waiting for bigger packages but. Um, I can see why you know you'd want to get this out the door, and I mean, and I and I guess you can always wrap it up later. You know, going going forward, you could always include this in in a timed event like Fresh Start was. Um, well, that's but right. I would and be all be, over that. Hmm. This would be a good thing, though. I mean, release it like this. See if there's some interest in it. Uh, make sure it works okay, and then. Get it out into a, you know this year's competition, this year's sort of fresh start worlds. Uh, you'd yeah. love to see something like that because I'd love to see in RS3 sort of 
you know, what they had in, in, in Fresh Start Worlds, where there was that competitive side. Yes, that leads, you know, people complain, oh, it leads to, you know, unhealthy lifestyles and this type of thing. But, you know, people have got to be responsible for themselves. You can't blame yes, I mean, someone else. On. I mean, take responsibility for the way you are. Yeah. Uh, you know, don't punish the majority because there's a couple of people who can't control themselves. Uh, it, you know, it, well, yeah, we I need mean... to have more of that type of thing. Seriously, you can sit at home do heroin all day long too, but it's probably not going to work out for you. <laughs> exactly. I mean, it just... <laughs> well, it's like like here in Australia, I can only go to the casino twenty four hours a week, uh, and sort of two months after they pass that rule, the government opens their own online kino site twenty four seven. So I can go and play poker for twenty four hours a week, or I can sit at home playing kino for you know ninety seven hours. Oh wow. <laughs> You know, it's just like, come on. Yeah, there, there's a time for protecting people from themselves, and there's a time people have to stand up and do it, you know, <laughs> look after their own pe- their own things. Take yeah. responsibility, you're a freaking adult. <laughs> yep. I don't know how we got to peers from that, but I, it's, it's, an, it's an interesting discussion in terms it's of limited... It's pure logic, Shane. No, <laughs> no it's just... But, yeah, I'm saying, because people complained about Fresh Start World, you know, it, it, yeah. it led to an unhealthy lifestyle where people were playing, you know, sort of 16, 18, 20 hours a day. And, you know, and that's not healthy. But, I mean, it's also not Jagex's fault that, you know, people can't control themselves. And, you know, we shouldn't be punished because a couple can't control themselves is what, you know, is basically what my, my point was. And I'd love to see, you know, a, a three or four month competition where, you know, we had this pure type thing and, you know, work it out around that. It'd be fantastic. That's it. I'm suing McDonald's. I'm 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 overweight, and I think it's their fault. <laughs> I just I went there tonight. I can't help it. You know. <laughs> but but when you look at this at the end of the day, in terms of uh, Jagex updates that they have put out, I don't know how much dev work went into the peer update this week. I don't. But if we were able to spin off an entire three month comp- competitive mode from this in terms of skill blocking and utilizing the high score infrastructure they had from before. Yeah. That would be interesting. And it's because a lot obviously more right, for your buck. Right. Cause right? obviously right now the user interface for this is you go talk to Nastroth and you block XP and a skill, but what's to say Jagus just doesn't decide to do that. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I could just be a step in the, in the, you know, process of, of onboarding, right? If you had a time to vent like that, like, yeah. okay, well, what are you blocking? Or, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know. It, I, I think there's a lot of possibilities with it. Um, other than uh, just some kind of incentive, other than making up your own game. Yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And if anything, it's interesting to look how we've gone from something that was PVP related prior to EOC in RS2 era to something here that is now based around the prestige and vanity of it to saying maybe this is how, you know, a future Fresh Start Worlds like or something like Fresh Start Worlds could take off for RS3. I think that uh, proves there was merit in the idea in 2004 and there still is merit in it today. It just needs to be applied correctly. And and I think that's that. I think is going to be the grand realization of this peer discussion. I think so, you're right. So, um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed that. And this is once again a bit of a preview behind the curtain. We we called this one effectively half a half a monthly bit um, <laughs> in terms of in terms of how we produce this. So, if you like this, uh, please please do uh, let us know. But with that, we're going to move on to our achievements right now. Uh, we only got a handful of them this week. So, starting off on the 28th of March, we had Barizi who got 99 cooking, also 99 farming on the 27th. Then we have Lady Claw with 120 agility on the 27th as well. And moving on to March 26, we have Zone X 9191 with 99 archaeology, my favorite skill. And on March 25th, Nafan with my second favorite skill, 120 Slayer. Right on. All right. And then moving on, also on the 25th, we have Worth Tasker with 99 Prayer. And we have 
Nard with 99 farming on March 24th. Nicely done, everyone. All right, we got two picks of the week, uh, both TV shows this week. We're going to let Pernasius go first because he's uh, going solo on this one. <laughs> okay, this one, is, it's a show on Netflix. It's its another one from South Korea. It's called Physical 100. Uh, I sort of describe it as a, as a cross between Ninja Warrior and Squid Games, although they don't kill the losers if they <laughs> when they drop out. So that was the one sad thing. But anyway, it is, it is a reality show. It's... <laughs> Maybe in 10 years' time they'll start doing that, but... Uh... <laughs> But no, but basically they bring in a hundred of uh, you know a hundred people in top physical shape, uh, men and women, uh, for all walks of life. You know, you've got you know uh, bodybuilding competition people, you've got wrestlers, uh, you know, there's a car salesman in there, a whole lot of different people, and uh, basically it's. It's a battle to the end with one person standing and they win 300 million won at the end, which I think is something like a million, a million US dollars, uh, I think it worked out at. But anyway, it, it is it is an incredible show to see the physicality of it. Uh, yeah, if you can handle dub shows, I mean, the, the people when they're talking... You know, it, you don't get that excitement of actual hearing the real voices, but oh, okay. Yeah, you know, as I said, they st- you can watch it if you if you understand South Korean, uh, great, watch it that way. But if like me, uh, you you watch it dubbed, you you really the 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 talking is secondary. It is the competition itself. You watch these people, and it is incredible. I mean, basically, they start off with a competition uh, just to divide people into groups. Uh, first off, where they've got a hang from these metal poles on a roof for, uh, you know, the the last one standing type thing. Uh, they sort of, that divides them into sort of a top 50 and bottom 50. Uh, and then they get to sort of choose who they're going to compete against. Uh, you know, it moves on to sort of a like a, a wrestling type battle uh, to wipe out 50% of the competition. So, yeah, by the, by, by the time you get to the first actual quest, as they call it, uh, you know, half the people are gone, and they just keep going. And you know, by the end of it, just the the, the stuff that they put these people through. I mean, there they were there were competitors passing out. You know, they were they were pushing themselves that far. They were vomiting. Oh God! Uh, and yeah, just to get to the. I mean, I'm surprised no one did die on the show. It they were pushing them that hard. Uh, I mean, the second last competition, the semi final, basically. I mean. I was in pain just watching it. My muscles were, were killing me just watching what these people were being put through. So, yeah, I highly recommend it if if you like that sort of that that physical reality type show, you know, your Ninja Warriors, uh, that type of thing, uh, and you enjoy Squid Games. Check this out. Uh, physical One Hundred. It's on Netflix. Um, yeah, really, really good show. All right, sounds good. You know, cool. you know, this makes me interested in both this and Squid Game. Actually, thinking about it now. Oh, Squid Game! You gotta watch Squid oh, Game. Oh yeah, Shane, it I was... mean, you're late, man. I know. I was, I was very hesitant on I... it myself. Was it was that My you, Tannis, was... that told me to watch Squid Game? I think so, because I was hesitant at first too, but. It's good. <laughs> it's funny. We all, my son said, "No, you watch it once." Oh, okay. I flicked on the first episode. I'm going, okay, and I watched it in two days. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. how I was too. All right, let's get to our pick of the week then, Tannis. All right. Well, it's no surprise we are fans of Star Trek here at the show, and Picard has another season, season three, episode so. seven, airing tonight. Three mm-hmm. left after this. Hard to believe. Yeah. Um, yes. We waited a while because we wanted to get into it and see where it was going to go. Because um, I feel season one and two did not capture that same kind of next gen feeling. But it's safe to say that they got everything, I think, with the immersion right this time. And they got everybody back together again. Yeah, I mean, they got the, I mean, the bands back together, right? Like, the first two seasons, I thought, I thought were good. They kind of had the label, of, you know, new Star Trek with, yeah. with some familiar, yeah. you know, a few familiar faces. But yeah. this feels like, um, 
it, it, it's different. Yeah, it's and, different from the first two Beatman. And one of the interesting parts about this, they brought on uh, some of the production designers from the next gen, who were actually involved in writing the TNG technical manual. And to them, they said, "This is the spiritual successor. This feels like the next generation season eight in terms of how it was written, how it was built, and of course the the design behind it." as well which i think is what a lot of people have been asking for since 2003 and the and star trek nemesis yeah well it's really fun too to kind of see where where all the players went and what they did and you know and now they're coming coming back and how that's all intertwining and it's um Probably now it started off a little rocky for me. I wasn't I wasn't sure if I was liking it at first. Um, I liked the first episode, but the second episode kind of I, I wasn't real sure. Um, and then it just grabbed me uh, on the every episode after that. I was just like, oh, oh, it's getting better. Oh, and it's getting even better. And there's so many like things from the next gen. Yep. Um, not just. Not just the uh, actors, but uh, some other, some other. What would you call it, Shane? Like nostalgia moments. That... Yeah, and 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 threads that were hinted at but never fully explored. Yeah, and and yeah. Easter eggs galore. Just yes, uh, all over the place. Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, it's some, to give you Easter eggs. It, it, it's something yeah. that you know. You know how we can go through a Lord Diggers episode and highlight all the lore Easter eggs in a RuneScape piece of content. The Star Trek fans can definitely do this in season three of Picard. Yeah, for sure. Um, for sure. And and I will just say also uh, with this one, you know, we talked a lot about Strange New Worlds last year and how that was a perfect onboarding point for people mm-hmm. who would be new to Star Trek, right? Um, mm-hmm. I feel like this series is best for people who really like Next Generation. I Next Gen, you know, I'm going to throw in something else, though. Deep Space Nine? Exactly. One of the greatest and most wonderful Star Trek villain races. Uh, 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 uh. That's where we're going to leave it. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. No spoilers. No spoilers. (laughs) Though for people who have watched DS9, probably already know what we're going at there. But um, nonetheless, nonetheless, uh, three episodes left. Perfect time to jump in. This one really lends itself to watching it all back to back to back. I think I'm going to do that after it's done. Um, Watch as much as I can all together again on that. So that's a problem these days with things like Netflix. I can't watch a, sh- a, pro- a show that gets released one episode a week anymore. Yeah, well, I that's what this is. <laughs> so I just binge it's, watch. It's yeah. hard. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just I I've become one of those satisfy me now type people, and I, I, just watch I know. Stuff, binge watch the whole lot. <laughs> yeah, it, it's hard because both shows that I watch right now they're they're both weekly releases with right. with the card and and Mando. Um, Oh, and, and, and yeah, just, I'm, yeah. I'm hanging for Mandalorian to be yeah. finished so I can And, uh, and another watch fun that. thing about Picard, um, pretty much all the ships that aren't that aren't the Titan are Star Trek online models. They're all oh, that's so cool. cool, too. They're yeah. all so good. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, what have we been doing? Let's start with you, Pronacius. Uh, basically... Yak tracking. Uh, I need 77 coins to unlock all the rewards. Uh, I'm currently sitting at 50. So all I've really been doing on the game lately is mining. Uh, I've just done 25k light and dark Anamica. I'm now chasing 25k rune runite. <laughs> Uh, and then I've turned them all into bars. So I've hit the. I'm up to 156 so using, mining XP now using the t- Tannis method. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, I, 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 I tend to um, Iron Man most of my, my stuff. The only thing I really buy are, uh, are weapons and things like that. Or, you know, if uh, I need... I mean, seeds are so cheap at the moment, so I've just stocked up on pretty much 10K of all the types of seeds to keep in uh, my, my little seed bag for when I need them. But, um, yeah, I don't buy a lot on the GE. I just... I, I like, I mean, I don't want to rush the game. I mean, I like doing things myself and 
you know, what's the point in just buying all the uh, ore to turn into, to, to do my smithing when I'm going to have to get mining up anyway. So I might as well mine it and then do it all myself. Yep. Fair enough. I hear you. <laughs> I went that route um, myself. What yak track to ask you on? Oh no, I finished. Oh, um, wow. I finished that two weeks ago. It was. It took me just as long as a normal yak track uh, in the end. And you did the task. Uh, I A's, always right? generally. Sorry. You did the task A's. Oh yeah, yeah. The I I did skip. I I I I broke my rules and I used one of my skip tokens this time. Um, because there was one task was burn. I think it was like burn fifteen hundred elders or uh, um, yeah. the the ones you get on uh, the uh, the driftwood, which yeah, I didn't have enough driftwood. And I'm not I'm not you know they're too expensive to burn. <laughs> so I I use that one there. I, I like the task where they have do this or this. I, I think that should be on every t- yeah. Have your um have your your kill and uh, skill one. But I think each task should have you a, 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 this one or this one. One quick one, which will cost you money. One slower one, which you know you can do without cost. And then your skill and chill should be the longest one of all of them. Yeah, that's fair. Uh, Tannis, how about you? Um, so I just basically finished about five k mahogany frames. Oh my god! Wow, and we are getting ready to start building lots and lots and lots of workshops. Um, but They're that so has slow been... to make too. That's uh, that's yeah. well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they have been. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's really all I've been doing on RS, um, playing ESO on the side. But um, yeah, that's because I'm, I'm going for, uh, I think I want to do the 120 construction now. So, nice. Uh, that's what we're going for. Have you Can considered how... Have you considered selling the frames and then doing a different construction training method? I thought about that, but the only construction training method I would really want to do would be um, proteins on a um, portable workbench. So that's how I did it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if I don't have the proteins, then I'm not going to. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's. Yeah. yeah, it's too Pretty too laborious quick. doing uh, prawn, the prawn guy. Yeah. Um, what I uh, what do you think about the um, the new plank making in in Fort Forensic three not costing you anything? I mean, I think that's that's really cool. Brilliant. Um yeah. yeah. I mean, it's it's, it's <laughs> brilliant. It. Um, and it's even it's nice too to have your um your invention machines right there so you can pull everything out of your plank makers yep. and then run them through the the other plank maker and then run it through the framer <laughs> and you're you oh, know, well, you're see, I, don't, I don't ever use a plank maker i i cut the wood make turn the wood into planks and uh yeah it's all free now and then just go bang 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 so yeah oh, that was really good update that one and you know the more and more i think about it that's the that's the star of fort four and three for us yep except yeah. except it it has taken another gold sink away. Paying the sawmill to make to turn your logs into planks. <laughs> yeah. But it was already kind of gone with the plank makers, I think. Yeah, exactly. Well that's yeah. 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 All right. Uh as for me this week, uh, you know, the same thing, continuing on Yak Track, doing the task gaze. Um this week was uh cooking and then more cooking, interestingly enough. Uh, and then some wood cutting along the way as well. Uh, so I mean, they're they're good, you know, off to the side sorts of things to do. Um, I haven't used any skips yet, but just been uh, progressing uh, with that. In addition to uh, all the dailies and whatnot, of course, as well, like um, like the potion flasks and whatnot. I, I cannot underscore how impactful those potion flasks are, combined with daily rune runs and. Um, and the the dinosaur roars from the Anachronia place. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful uh, yeah. as passive money-making methods. But nonetheless, uh, that's what I've been up to. Uh, just the Yak Track stuff. But I don't think there's anything else this week, unless you guys have anything else you want to mention before we go. That's it no. for me. All right. Well, we'll be back next week. 
Um, if you want to listen to us and get the podcast delivered automatically to you, the best way to do that is to subscribe. And we're on all the podcast listeners out there. We're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Pocket Cast, Amazon, Stitcher, and many more. Update.show slash subscribe. We're also on YouTube at youtube.com slash rsbnb. That's where we post the video versions of the shows and the nibbles as well and you know the usual thing if you like the show give it a like and subscribe helps the channel out so on and so forth and that's very much so because you know we're primarily an audio show and that's where the bulk of our listeners are so youtube is uh just another uh place of putting it but um that's it for this week and uh thanks to the both of you being here we'll be and we'll be back next week for another episode of rs baby update see you then everyone take care yeah happy skyping all (laughs) 